This video is brought to you by Green Man Gaming, who are offering up to 17% off upcoming heavy hitters like Armored Core 6, or Remnant 2, or Mortal Kombat 1, or even Starfield. Click the link below and use offer code JULY17 to start saving right now, or stick around to the end of the video to learn more. Oh hey, it's me, Shillup. Sorry to disappoint you by daring to put up a video on my own f***ing channel. Based on the comments section from Austin's recent Exo Primal review, I'm sure you'd all much rather it be Austin previewing Armored Core today. Well, bad luck. Bandai Namco invited me to this hands-on session, not Austin, so you're all gonna have to lower your standards and put up with me for the next 20 minutes. All right, Armored Core 6 fires of Rubicon. Bandai Namco invited me to a hands-on session for this one prior to my going on vacation. It was at their office in Sydney. I got to play a PC build of the game using a controller, but I also had the option to use a keyboard and mouse. As always, this is a preview build and not representative of final quality, so keep in mind that things may change or improve at launch. I got to play for around about four hours, experiencing the first 11 or so missions of the game and fight a number of major and minor mini bosses. I got to capture my own footage, which is what you're seeing here, and Bandai Namco also provided me with some additional B-roll for some of the later missions that I wasn't able to reach during my session. Do note that while I captured a whole bunch of footage, I'm not allowed to show you a fair amount of what I captured, as Bandai are obviously concerned about spoilers and want to keep plenty of powder dry for that August 25th release. So right off the top, I think it's important for me to clarify that I am not an Armored Core veteran. I've not played an Armored Core game before. I think I owned one on the PS2 back in the day, but if I ever booted it up, I can't recall doing so. It's a series that just never really spoke to me, despite being an anime fan back in the day, loving Virtua On at the arcades, and just being generally interested in the whole mech thing. Armored Core has always been a niche title, especially in the West, and for whatever reason, it just never caught my attention. I imagine quite a few people fall into that same category, and much like myself, I imagine many of those people are now very keenly interested in Armored Core, because in the intervening 11 years since the release of Armored Core 5, the game's developer, FromSoft, kind of turned the entire games industry on its head with the release of Dark Souls 1 through 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and Elden Ring. The Souls-like subgenre has become one of the most influential subgenres ever, and almost every new FromSoft iteration on that formula has refined or expanded crucial aspects of it, enabling the studio to deliver masterpiece after masterpiece. Armored Core 6 is intriguing right out of the gate, because for the first time in 11 years, FromSoft is not refining or expanding on that formula. They are instead going back to their roots, to this mech series that isn't about swords and shields and magic or contiguous open worlds or a disempowerment fantasy where everything can kill you in one hit. This is instead a sci-fi technology-led game where you will spend vast amounts of time in your menu customizing your mech to complete missions that can be as short as just one or two minutes sometimes. It's a game comprised of distinct disconnected maps, each of them stronger in their vertical possibilities than their horizontal spans. Crucially, it's a game where, at least in the opening block, FromSoft wants you to feel powerful, fast, durable, and lethal. The opening chapter of modern FromSoft games have typically been about your weak, fragile husk overcoming impossible odds. Armored Core 6 inverts this by giving you ready access to a mech that is vastly more powerful than most of the foes you'll encounter, and that only meets its match in mini-bosses and final boss encounters. After four hours with Armored Core, two things stand out to me. Number one, this is not a Souls-like. That point may be eye-rollingly obvious to many of you, but there's been no small amount of discourse out there with people using brief gameplay clips to argue that Armored Core and Dark Souls are more alike than they are dissimilar. That's just not true, at least not from my experience. While these games do share some similarities such as deep RPG customization, challenging boss encounters, and precisely tuned encounter design, the structure, tone, and core gameplay loop of Armored Core 6 are all totally distinct from what From Souls-like games aim to deliver. It's interesting to explore how From's decade and a half of Souls-like success has influenced the design of Armored Core 6, but that really is where the line of inquiry should end, because trying to brute force Armored Core 6 under the Souls-like category is a fool's errand. Secondly, what's also clear to me is that unlike Souls-like games, Armored Core 6 is a slow burn. You can play just a few minutes of even Dark Souls 2 and immediately be drawn in by its world, its monsters, the items you might discover, and so much more. Armored Core 6 is not like that. Some four hours in, much of it has felt slow, 
disjointed, at times frustrating, and very often uneven. Some of the early missions are so short and so underwhelming that I was left thinking, man, that mission really could have been an email. But at other times, Armored Core 6 is showing the flashes of brilliance that I expect will define the rest of the game. Thrilling boss encounters, enemy mechs as big as mountains needing to be brought low by my energy blade and rockets, an intriguing storyline that in typical FromSoft fashion delights in leaving much unsaid, and perhaps most impressive of all, some really excellent encounter design that fuses unique level layouts, enemy types and objectives to deliver experiences that few games have offered this past decade. Armored Core 6 starts out very slow, to the point where I actually can't say that I like it yet but I'm almost certain that I eventually will. There's an unseen quality to it that's just quietly humming and building and you can feel it at all times. And coupled with From's reputation for genre defining excellence, that's more than enough for me to be very, very excited to get my hands on the full game next month. Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon begins here, in orbit, above a planet that houses a rare mineral called coral. It's so precious that its presence here essentially defines this planet, much of it a mining colony and refinery to excavate and process the material, militant corporations staking their claims and protecting it with advanced weaponry, mercenary outfits floating from job to job, switching sides in an endless war waged in the name of profit. It's a simple but effective premise. From space we can see how thoroughly this planet has been claimed by industrialization, and when we make landfall we can see up close how thoroughly ruined this world is. There's no beauty to be found here. It's factories the size of cities and barren tundra, rolling desert punctuated only by ruins and bleak cityscapes that clearly served only the most utilitarian needs. While these visuals certainly sell the premise of a broken world, they also lack the impact that From Souls-like titles have never struggled to elicit. I'll be frank, four hours deep, Armored Core is a pretty bland looking game. Its levels are functionally interesting in their layouts and their scenario design, but few of them have much visual flair to accompany that design flair. The factory spaces in particular feel very dull, like the environments of Nier Automata, a game some six years old which even back then was panned for its uninspired environments. Whether it's indoor factories, outdoor urban space, snowy tundra or whatever, it all just looks a little… yeah, bland. There's certainly reason to be hopeful that this changes later in the game, as From's art team are unquestionably one of the best in the business. But from the Undead Berg to Majula to the Cathedral Ward to Limgrave, From games have never struggled to make a strong first impression, and it's a little curious that after some four hours with Armored Core, I really can't think of any unique space that stands out as being particularly memorable for its visual design. Separate from art design, it's clear that Armored Core isn't pushing the envelope when it comes to the more technical visual elements. Now I was playing this on a top of the line PC at max settings, and even then textures and lighting looked a little flat and low res, shadows and ground clutter are fairly minimal, terrain detail is very low, there's just not a lot of depth to what you're seeing. It's as though From have pulled a lot of the detail out to get it running on PS4 and Xbox One and also keep the action smooth. So is it smooth? Uh, basically yes, but like I said this was a top of the line PC and even then I did notice the odd frame drop here and there. From games have typically been a bit wonky with their day one technical performance, Elden Ring was a perfect example of that. So personally I'm looking forward to doing some more detailed testing across some different PCs to see how well this runs come launch. Incidentally, I did get a quick look at the PC options menu and you can see it here. Nothing too remarkable, From have never been industry leaders when it comes to PC options menus and what's here is in line with that. It's enough, but it's certainly not enthusiast level. Motion blur options are helpful, but there's no FOV slider if that's something that matters to you in a game like this. Interestingly, Armored Core 6 does support ray tracing, but do note that this is only in the garage when you are doing all of your customization and fine tuning. There is no ray tracing during actual gameplay, which yeah, makes sense given that ray tracing hasn't been a focus of FromSoft games to this point, and it'd be surprising if they started here. I know that I haven't been particularly complimentary in this block, but I also don't want to give the impression that Armored Core has nothing to offer, either artistically or technically. The design of the mechs was awesome, and some of the larger boss encounters absolutely delivered on the visual spectacle we've come to expect from From. The mech customization also looks fantastic, and while I've only unlocked a tiny portion of the overall arsenal at this point, the ability to make a really fucking cool looking mech is already there. Technically, I think most of From's choices have paid off, as the lack of pop-in coupled with massive levels and high enemy density have already produced some very tense missions where I felt pressured no matter where I was on these massive maps. 
So all of that stuff is great, and I'm sure there's more in store, but so far, Armored Core 6's visuals aren't creating the sort of knockout first impression that other FromSoft titles do. And that's a reality that's mirrored in the gameplay side of things as well. I'm sure there are plenty of Armored Core veterans watching this video who might find a few details I'm going to spell out here a little obvious, but since most people watching this video wouldn't have played an Armored Core game, I want to spend a bit of time outlining exactly what this game is since it's very different to From's output over the past decade. Armored Core 6 is a story-led, mission-based mech action game with a very strong focus on mech customization. You play as a single character who may or may not have an actual human body. You get given a mech at the start with no ability to customize it in that first mission. The story unfolds almost exclusively over comms channels like the codex in Metal Gear. Your base of operations is a large garage represented by a number of menu options that let you buy new mech components, customize your mech, conduct training missions in VR, and deploy to main missions. Booting up a mission will give you a mission briefing followed by a short deployment cutscene, a quick loading screen later, and you're out in the field. Missions will have at least one but potentially multiple objectives. You get the job done, and as soon as you do, your handler will tell you that it's time to go home, fade to black, and you're back in your garage HQ ready to do it all over again. Armored Core's early missions are a mix of fucking awesome and pretty underwhelming actually. Your arrival on the planet is a 20 minute epic that shuttles you through a range of environments, both indoor and outdoor. You fight a variety of units before facing off against an introductory mini boss, a giant attack helicopter that has missiles spewing out of every orifice. There's some cool story beats that happen here too. The whole thing just pops off and you're like, hell yeah man, this rules, can't wait for more. The next mission is one I can't show you, but it's equally good in a different way. It's in a city setting, and it's all about taking down these artillery cannons spread out about the city, and they're being guarded by enemy units, and it's really tense, and it's just, it's a good time. The mission after that one is another one I can't show you, but it's set in a very small section of a factory. You just have to kill a handful of really easy, low-level enemies, and the whole thing is over in like three minutes. I finished that mission, and I was like, wait, what, is that it? That unevenness was a feature of the rest of my time with the game. I distinctly remember one mission where I was tasked with hunting down an enemy AC, and it was all hyped up on comms as being this new experimental model that could pose a big threat, etc. I killed him in about 50 seconds, and the entire mission was 90 seconds long. But then the very next mission was this one, where I had to take down this mech the size of a mountain. It was a mining rig with this laser eye, and I had to make my approach while dodging this laser, and then I had to cripple one of its legs so I could climb on top of it, I had to destroy a number of its core components, and then take down the eye itself, which was kind of like a boss battle, but a pretty easy one. That mission was fucking cool, and there were six or seven missions that were equally cool. But yeah, there were also like three or four missions which were really short, simple, straightforward, and I kind of wondered what their purpose was. When Armored Core is really cooking though, it's very awesome and very unique. There's just nothing else that I've played quite like this. I think that's partly because we don't get many mech games here in the West, but also because From have done some really interesting things with level design, enemy types, enemy locations, and objectives. When I arrived for my hands-on session, one of the first things the Bandai Namco representative told me was that verticality is one of the game's central design pillars. Souls-likes are very horizontal games, which is why the jump buttons in Sekiro and Elden Ring opened up the gameplay models so much. Here in Armored Core, the entire game is built around the need to think vertically. Some levels here are absolutely massive, not only in how far they stretch, but in how high they reach. You are constantly making these huge leaps to reposition yourself, using the high ground as an advantage and low ground for cover. Some of the artillery lines are so high up that you need to use gravity lifts in order to reach them, and executing your approach requires a mix of strategic planning and mechanical deftness. That's the thing I came to understand about Armored Core's best missions. They're kind of like action puzzles. The level layouts, enemy types, and enemy placements are all very specific, and if you just try and brute force your way through them, you are going to get pureed by the cannonade. Instead, you have to poke at the perimeter, find weak spots, 
engage in guerrilla style skirmish tactics before ducking back behind cover. It's a mixture of positioning, managing a weapon cooldowns, target prioritization, and more than a little intuition since you start to get a feel for the battlefield and you can sense when things are getting just a little too hot. As impressed as I was by these mission types, I felt like I was only scratching the surface. One of the later missions I did saw me facing off against advanced invisible teleporting mechs, each of them capable of sniping me from across the map and dealing huge damage. I had to leapfrog from cover to cover while trying to scan for them so I could target lock or connect with a melee strike. It felt like that Sniper Wolf boss showdown in Metal Gear, and this was just one regular ass mission here in Armored Core. The cleverness of the mission and scenario design is important because the combat is not as mechanically demanding or satisfying as it is in From Souls-like titles. Firstly, the difficulty equation here is very different. Most enemies you'll encounter, at least in the first four hours, are largely fodder and pose very little threat. In fact, I'd argue that 95% of the enemies you'll face in those opening hours fall into that category, with the challenge only kicking in against named armored core enemies and bosses. Taking down a lowly skeleton in Dark Souls can be a very tense duel if the circumstances line up just right. I never found anything close to that here, since FromSoft are clearly pushing a different power fantasy. They want you to feel strong and fast and in control, and they want your armored core mech to be a dangerous threat that instills fear in the hearts of your enemies. It's a confronting shift for Souls-like fans, but I really love seeing From do this after experiencing more than a decade of the exact opposite. Part of your lethality comes from the various target-assisted weapons you're able to equip. There are all manner of missile batteries, automatic weapons, laser cannons, and melee weapons, all of which are driven by lock-ons, meaning that you can sort of fire and forget, picking in and out of cover in time with your weapon cooldowns. There are also plenty of manually targeted weapons, but the initial arsenal definitely favors auto-targeting, which, while effective and easy to use, is a lot less satisfying than having to manually point and fire. For those reasons, I found Armored Core to be a pretty easy game, at least in those opening hours. The combination of me feeling powerful, enemies feeling weak, and weapons doing a lot of the work for me meant that I could progress through most of the missions without much difficulty. However, that all changed when I met this asshole. This was the first proper boss, and he absolutely dumpstered me over and over again until I finally got him down. It was an encounter that had all the hallmarks of a classic FromSoft Souls-like encounter, and if there's any one part of the game that felt closest to FromSoft's recent output, it's absolutely these boss encounters. In this way, Armored Core is definitely a challenging game when it wants to be, but from what I can tell, this challenge seems to be very concentrated in key missions or encounters, rather than being spread out across every moment of the game like it is in a Souls-like. That's a big shift to get used to when you're playing a game with the name FromSoft on the box. But like I said, after a decade of playing one type of game from this developer, I'm really pumped to see them doing something totally different here. The last big standout feature of Armored Core games is the mech customization, and it quickly proved to be one of the most impressive parts of my time with the game. Customization exists at three levels, visuals, functionality, and stats. Visually, there is a lot of flexibility, and yes, I did give my mech a unit one paint job, thank you very much for noticing. It's not just paint though, it's material types and how shiny those materials are or how worn they are. There's almost unlimited flexibility in how you can refine the top coat of your mech. And there's even a tool that lets you upload and download designs, meaning you can share your creations with other players. In terms of functionality, there's a huge array of weapons to choose from in just this opening block. And I expect that there will be dozens and dozens more later on. Each of them have their own distinct nuances, like one missile battery that fires horizontally but does more damage, and another one that arcs high meaning it can get around cover with the trade-off of it dealing slightly less damage. There are chassis options that increase or decrease your move speed, agility, or payload, and your equip options are governed by not only weight, but also by power load considerations. And this brings us to the third dimension of customization, stats. Man, there are a lot of stats in this game, so many that there would have been no way for me to have understood even half of them during my playtime. Suffice it to say, Armored Core is just as focused on deep, rewarding RPG systems as any of their other titles, potentially more so if this early arsenal is anything to go by, but we'll have to see how all of this evolves into the later game.
the top of this preview, I said that I wasn't sure that I liked Armored Core yet. And I want to circle back to that point because I'm sure that that sentence stood out like, what? You don't immediately love a FromSoft game? What the hell's the matter with you? The fact is though, Armored Core 6 doesn't make a very strong first impression. It is slow. It is disjointed. It is uneven. Its combat is not as immediately satisfying as other From titles. Its visuals are a lot more one note and its spectacle more muted. I could lie to you and say, oh my god, this is absolutely incredible. But to be honest, it wasn't. It felt a lot like setup, slowly working towards something bigger, more elaborate and more impressive. But as I mentioned in that intro, you can really feel that build. You can feel missions becoming more interesting. You get these new customization options in the garage thick and fast. You are fighting bosses that give you the challenge and spectacle that you want when you slap down 60 or $70 on a FromSoft title. The things that I was hoping for, I am seeing them, but they're coming in really slowly. Like I said in the title, Fires of Rubicon is a slow burn, one that's comfortable taking its time to build out its world, systems, and story. Perhaps that start might be a little too slow for some, but personally, I am on board. And while Armored Core 6 hasn't won me over yet, I think there's every chance that From's unbroken winning streak will continue here in Fires of Rubicon. Alrighty, so that's Armored Core 6, but what if I told you that you could get 17% off the purchase price of Armored Core 6 on PC? Or how about 17% off Remnant 2? Or how about 17% off a little known RPG by the name of Starfield? Don't believe me? Well, you, my friend, are about to get told because it is true thanks to this video sponsor, Green Man Gaming. If you haven't heard of Green Man Gaming before, then you have been missing out. I've been buying stuff from them for years because they've always offered excellent prices on PC titles, but they're not a gray market key reseller. Every single key they sell has been sourced directly from the publisher themselves. There are no scammy stolen keys that end up getting canceled weeks or months after you've bought them. It's 100% legit. All the money goes directly to the publisher and all the savings go directly to you. Green Man Gaming have always been one of the best places to pick up new release PC games because they're just cheaper almost every time. It's the same Steam key you'd buy from Valve. You just plug it straight into Steam and it appears in your Steam library. It's just like, 10, 15, 17% cheaper when you buy it from Green Man Gaming. It's release season right now, which means you can get that 17% discount on Armored Core, on Remnant 2, on Payday 3, on Mortal Kombat 1, and even on Starfield by using offer code JULY17 at checkout. That's not all though. Green Man Gaming have a catalog of over 9,000 games and many of them are on sale right now during their summer sale. Your pile of shame can never be too high and there's no better or cheaper place to pile it sky high than Green Man Gaming. That sale runs until August 5th, mind you, so be sure to get in quick. The discounts don't stop there either. Every time you spend money at Green Man Gaming, you earn XP points, which as you collect, grant access to their exclusive loyalty program. Here you'll find even lower prices. So if you've spent with Green Man Gaming in the past, you could probably take advantage of these even bigger savings. Over 6 million gamers have purchased from Green Man Gaming over the years. That's a lot of happy customers who have saved plenty of dosh thanks to Green Man's savings. 2023 is a banger year for video games and the second half of it is looking just as strong as the first. So if you wanna grab new release titles like Armored Core, Remnant 2 and Starfield while getting up to 17% off, then click the link below and use offer code JULY17 at checkout. That's offer code JULY17 at checkout. Some exclusions, terms and conditions apply. Thanks Green Man Gaming for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it.